so the miracle has finally come. No, but in all seriousness, Rasmus Hoyland has finally started to show some of the quality that reflects the price that Manchester United paid for him last season. Maybe it was because of the power of Sean Millis, but Hoyland has scored 4 goals in his last 4 league appearances after failing to score in his first 14. Joining arguably the biggest football club in the world for a sum of £72 million, there were always going to be immense pressure placed upon him. This was further fueled by the fact that he is a striker, which is arguably the most scrutinised position in football, especially if the goals don't start coming straight away. Oh, and also the fact that he is a young striker from Scandinavia with the name Hoyland. Many drew comparisons to another player that fits in all these categories. Despite United's disastrous season in the Champions League, Hoyland cannot be blamed one bit for that, scoring 4 goals in 5 games. But of course, it's been in the Premier League where Hoyland has been scrutinised the most, after an extremely underwhelming start to his United career. Whilst he has come under extreme scrutiny in his short time at Manchester United, it's not all been his fault. In fact, if you talk to many United fans, they would have said that Hoyland simply does not get enough chances for him to be able to score plenty of goals. The data would back this up as Hoyland's 5.32 xG is only the 47th highest in the league, and in fact, his teammates Rashford, Fernandez, and McTominay all have higher xG this season. This means that he has scored 4 goals, whereas he has been expected to score 5, so a slight underperformance, but nevertheless, his teammates need to create more goal scoring opportunities for him, which sounds unusual as he plays with one of the best creators in world football named Bruno Fernandes. Even watching United games, it isn't as if Hoyland is missing tons of chances, because personally, I can't remember many scenarios where he has missed absolute sitters, unlike some other strikers in the league. But United's lack of creation for this striker is a bigger problem that they need to address rather quickly. United have scored 31 goals so far, which is the 15th best in the league less than the likes of Luton, Brentford and Wolves. They are actually 12th for most XG and have underperformed by around 3 goals which is still extremely poor. However, it's not all doom and gloom for Manchester United because this is only the second time this season that United have won 3 consecutive games after an impressive 3-0 victory over West Ham that they have overtaken after this win. The expected goals were actually in favour of West Ham where they accumulated approximately 1.18 XG compared to United's 0.97. This can be explained by the fact that Hoyland and Garnacho's goals were extremely clinical whilst the other goal was a deflection. But this can be the difference between the top sides and the rest where the player quality can often make all the difference. But it's no coincidence that Hoyland's good form has resulted in the good form of Manchester United. But undoubtedly a huge positive this season despite everything has been the emergence of Kobe Mainu who just recently scored one of the best goals of the season to win United the game in the 97th minute. He has been extremely impressive whenever he has played, and if he was not injured for the first half of the season, perhaps United would be in a better position. Additionally, players like Hoyland and Garnacho have been in good form, and even Marcus Rashford has been showing glimpses of the player he was last season. They will need all three of these players to stay fit for the remainder of the season, because this quite clearly is their best attack, with Ahmed Diallo not being trusted by Ten Hag, and Anthony, who just does not look Premier League quality, after another disappointing cameo against Wolves last week. We also can't forget that United are slowly getting many players back from injury such as Luke Shaw, Harry Maguire and Lissandro Martinez, with Mason Mount also nearing a return. Although Martinez got injured last game against West Ham and looks to be unavailable for the next few weeks at least, which is very unfortunate with how important he is to how Eric Ten Hag wants his side to play. United's upcoming fixtures are a mixed bag, with home games against Fulham and Everton, along with visits away to Villa, Luton and Man City. But with their recent good form, perhaps this is where their season really begins and they will push hard to achieve a Champions League spot. And whilst there have been many ups and downs so far, their season is far from done, being only 8 points off 4th place Aston Villa, who they will be playing away from home next Sunday. However, they will be travelling away to Villa Park where Villa have won 9 out of 11 games and in fact, no team has won more games or scored more goals at home than Villa. England striker Oli Watkins has been Villa's star player this season with 11 goals and 10 assists, making him second for the player with the most contributions in the Premier League after Mohamed Salah. But other players like Leon Bailey, Douglas Luiz, John McGinn and Moussa Diaby have all played a huge role in getting Villa to where they are in the table. But despite an impressive showing against Sheffield United where they have scored 5 goals, Villa's recent league form has been far from perfect, winning just 2 from 6, including a 3-1 defeat at home to Newcastle. 
These two sides last met on Boxing Day when Manchester United came back from 2-0 down to win 3-2 with Hoyland grabbing the winner and his first Premier League goal. Villa notoriously play with a high line which has been a key to their fortunes thus far but this still has its obvious flaws which we saw when they last played at Old Trafford a few weeks ago. In the first half alone, United were caught offside six times which is the most of any team this season. But whilst this was a success for Villa for some of the game, United had runners like Rashford and Garnacho threatening him behind constantly, with Bruno Fernandes supplying them from deeper areas, they were able to eventually take advantage and complete the comeback. So Villa will likely set up the same way, especially being at home, where they'll be determined to get a win over a fellow top 4 contender. The opportunity for United to get in behind the Villa high line will always be there, which will suit the likes of Hoyland, Rashford and Garnacho. Although, United will also have to be very wary of the threat that Villa possesses, especially after a disappointing result at home last time out, they'll want to right those wrongs. I predict that there'll be a few goals for both sides this Sunday, perhaps a 3-2 win for United with Hoyland getting on the score sheet once again and continuing his good form.